And some of the new changes in the guideline, and I'm going to go a little and provide you a little overview. We know that normal muscle invasive breast cancer is basically a pediatric disease uh, with the recurrence potential, which varies from 30 to 80 percent at five years, and a progression potential which varies from 1 to 45 percent. So, you need to identify uh, bad from good non in muscle invasive. Uh, bladder cancers because your treatment would vary significantly. Uh, in order to do that, uh, over the years we had various prognostic tools in the form of URTC, risk calculators, in the originally defined in 2006, subsequently the Kyoto uh, model which was 2009. And then the URTC 2016 and very recently the EUR, EAU uh, prognostic indicator 2021. And I'm going to just quickly describe to you some of the salient features of these uh, nomograms. So the EAU 2021 is the latest uh, risk evaluator or prognostic indicator for um, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. It is the uh, only model that uses both the WHO 2004 and 2016 classification system. We know that uh, low grade versus high grade and T1, T2, and T, uh, G1, G1, T2, and G3 are the two difference in models. <coughs> Patients who were treated with BCG have been excluded so that uh, the impact on progression can be assessed for the natural course of the disease. One addition which has taken place in this uh, latest uh, risk calculator is the addition of uh, a risk group which is very high risk. So initially we had low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk, and now there is an addition of a very high risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Something that we didn't have previously was the variant histology, which includes the micropapillary, the sarcomatoid, the plasma cytoid, uh, the presence of lymphovascular invasion, and CIS in the prostatic urethra. They've all been categorized into very high risk group. Primary CIS, again, uh, is a high risk and uh, recurrent tumors have been assessed as well. So if we look at uh, the changes, uh, we can see that there is a significant difference in one year probability of progression between high and very high risk. So. The first one year progression pro progression potential uh, for high risk is 3.5%, whereas in very high risk, it is 16%. So it's significantly higher in, uh, in very high risk group compared to the high risk group. So it's important that we differentiate. Again, at five years, it is uh, 10 versus 40%. So again, a four times difference in progression potential at five years. So based upon this uh, new category of very high risk uh, bladder cancer has been identified, has been um, classified, and now it should be used uh, to distinguish high from very high risk because the treatment varies significantly. Now, if you look at the 2024 uh, EAU guidelines only recently released in the Paris meeting, uh, we are seeing that uh, significant changes have been made in those guidelines. A new category of high-grade recurrence during or after BCG therapy. BCG has become the, the de facto treatment option for aggressive non-muscle invasive bladder cancers, anything more than intermediate risk are treated by BCG, so high, very high risk cancers. BCG exposed patients 
now impose another new uh, group of patients that we need to look into. So uh, the table 7.2 describes BCG exposed tumor category and there's some other changes as well which includes uh, uh, how to deal with low grade recurrence in BCG uh, treated patients and um, the intermediate risk uh, bladder cancer group and how to treat them. The follow-up strategies have also been now looked into and have made been made a little more less uh, stringent. So I <coughs> present to you a case 67 year old smoker Gross painless hematuria for the last three months, uh, variable intensity, and it's been off and on. Uh, ultrasound examination showed a posterior wall bladder growth. Uh, he was advised TUR. A TUR was uh, done, and as you can see, there is a small papillary growth. It's relatively broad based, but uh, smallish growth, uh, less than three centimeters, on the posterior wall of the bladder, which was resected and the histopathology showed a high grade disease. Now, if we place this patient on our risk calculator, and uh, this is the risk calculator that you can all download on your um, mobile phones, both Android and iPhone applications are available. So this patient is less than 70 years. So this is a primary tumor there was uh, the main tumor that i've shown you and there was a small tumor as well so multiple tumor three centimeters t1 concomitant cis was not present and it was high grade so based upon these parameters this patient has a probability of progression after turbt without induction or maintenance bcg and is categorized as a high risk bladder cancer with one year progression of 3.5 percent five year about 10 percent and 10 years about 14 percent so based upon these factors you would recommend treatment in in your patient so patients uh, if you look at the guidelines uh, very clearly that we should stratify patients into low, intermediate, high, and very high risk category. Uh, and you can determine that by using the nmibc.net. Uh, this is something that you can download through this website, uh, and it is strongly recommended by the guidelines. Now, the 2006 EOR3 scoring model to predict the risk of tumor recurrence in individual patients treated with BCG is also strongly recommended. So the four risk categories, as I have been mentioning, these is low grade tumor, low risk tumor, which is a primary single TA low grade tumor, which is less than three centimeters without CIS in a patient who is less than 70 years of age. So these parameters are fulfilled. And if any of these parameters is not fulfilled, this becomes intermediate or high risk. Now, a primary low-grade tumor with uh, at most one of the following additional clinical risk features uh, become high risk and uh, intermediate risk is somewhere in between the low and the intermediate risk, uh, low and high risk. There is a very high risk patient is TA high grade with CIS and all three risk factors. The risk factors are uh, age greater than 70, multiple tumors, tumor diameter of greater than three centimeters, and stage T1. The uh, T1, G2 tumor with CIS, at least two risk factors, T1 high grade, and so on. So essentially, tumors with CIS in the prostatic urethra, tumor with lymphovascular invasion on your histopathology, and any of the variant histopathology like micropapillary, plasmacytoid, sarcomatoid, differentiation, etc. So all these features present, your patient uh, becomes a very high risk uh, category and they should be treated as such. 
another case of a 68 year old lady non-smoker drosinophilia recurrent episodes over the past two months the ultrasound showed again a posterior wall uh, growth looks rather solidish um, cytology times three was unremarkable and uh, she underwents uh, MRI scan as well which again is shown here which shows nice papillary configuration of the growth and you can very clearly see in the, uh, the layers of the bladder an MRI scan uh, is becoming excuse me, the new standard in the evaluation and management of uh, bladder cancer patients because often we can actually do the VIRAT scanning, VIRAT uh, categorization and we'll be able to differentiate T1 from T2 and T2 from T3 tumors. So again, uh, cystoscopy is obviously done and the cystoscopy showed this tumor. So she has single uh, greater than three centimeters tumor, which is TA without CIS uh, and it's low grade on histopathology. Uh, this all indicates a low risk cancer and uh, she was categorized as a low potential of progression at uh, one in five years. So again, these are some of the patients who can be uh, managed by uh, resection followed by a single dose of intravesical mitomycin C. And followed by uh, follow up, which is three months, nine months, and then uh, yearly for five years. So again, uh, summarizing EA low risk patients <clears throat> are the ones who have got a primary single TA low grade cancer, which is less than three centimeter without CIS in a less than uh, a younger than 70 years of age patient. So intravesical uh, therapy uh, is really recommended in low risk patients in whom uh, there is a recurrence detected more than one year after previous TURB. Uh, generally, low-risk patients can be treated by a single intravesical installation after surgery and nothing else as long as they remain uh, disease-free. Single installation definitely significantly reduces the now we are seeing a lot of geriatric patients and again uh, this is a 79 year old uh, male um, history of diabetes history of ischemic heart disease and status post uh, coronary artery bypass grafting valvular heart disease on warfarin so a lot of medical issues he had recurrent gross hematuria which was initially ascribed to use of warfarin however his um, um, in one of the episodes during hematuria, he was admitted in the hospital and developed an MI. So this was about just over two months back. Uh, obviously, he's considered as a very poor risk for um, anesthesia. And this patient was advised uh, 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 flexible cystoscopy to actually see if there is any chance, any, any bladder growth. So cystoscopy indicated a small papillary growth in the bladder. Now, uh, how to treat these patients who cannot even have a proper TURBT? Now this is um, interesting data of on chemoablation um, that uh, patients who've got lower intermediate risk cancers in whom uh, surgery is difficult or not possible because of the significant risks. These patients can be chemoablated and the cure rate of uh, is seen in one in, a, in a three patients, so about 37%, and which is biopsy proven, so biopsy shows no, no recurrence of disease. 
only uh, visible cystoscopy shows about 60% uh, complete cure rate. Uh, and uh, so if there is good compliance, there are less side effects, and these patients can be treated by chemoablation. And this is the risk, uh, this is the uh, summary of uh, patients who uh, are intermediate risk, like this gentleman. Uh, the chemoablation with mitomycin or epterigocin can be done uh, six cycles as is usual, and maintenance can be given in higher risk patients up to one year. Now, what about high and very high risk uh, category patients? Uh, the major concern in this group is that of progression, progression from uh, T1 to T2 disease. Uh, and in this uh, way, they become eligible for more aggressive treatment. So we know that uh, now we can um, separate high from very high risk patients uh, so that uh, these very high risk patients are probably candidate for more aggressive treatment right from the beginning rather than conservative treatment with intravesical BCG. So high and very high risk patient, explain the risk and consider radical cystectomy for very high risk patient uh, even in the initial stages. For high risk patient, intravesical BCG of uh, one to three years is recommended. Cystoscopy and cytology at three months is also highly recommended. If negative cystoscopy and cytology every three months for two years, uh, then we move on to every six months uh, evaluation until five years and then uh, yearly for um, evaluation with uh, CT or intravenous urogram to evaluate and look for <clears throat> upper tract involvement. So patients who've got positive cytology with no visible tumor in the follow-up, they should have an upper tract evaluation which is strongly recommended bladder random biopsies be taken and prostatic urethral biopsies be taken um, and if possible and if you have the facility you should do PDT to rule out uh, um, unrecognized carcinoma in situ. So if uh, the biopsy showed non-muscle invasive recurrence consider previous histological report and then treat these patients accordingly. If there is muscle invasion, then uh, obviously look into the muscle invasive uh, bladder guidelines, uh, which essentially tells you that you need to do your um, radical cystectomy as, as an option with or without major chemotherapy. Now, carcinoma in situ we know is, uh, is, a, is a difficult condition to manage. And without any treatment, approximately half of the patients would progress to muscle invasive disease. The risk factors for carcinoma in situ is concomitant T1 tumors, extended carcinoma in situ involving most parts of the bladder, or carcinoma in situ in the prostatic urethra. So these are the high risk CIS group patient. Uh, approximately 10 to 20 percent uh, have a comp uh, uh, complete cure uh, from intravesical BCG, uh, about 60% are non-responders and for these non-responders you need to be aggressive in treatment uh, with cystectomy. So in carcinoma in situ there is severe uh, cytological atypia which consists of loss of polarity as you can see in the histopathology, nuclear enlargement and hyperchromasia. Uh, so it's important your pathologist is conversant in diagnosing carcinoma in situ because it is not an easy condition to diagnose. So uh, this is again new in the uh, guidelines coming uh, this year and it is proposed that we need to be a little more stringent, a little less stringent in the follow-up uh, using imaging in low and intermediate risk patients. So imaging is not really 
uh, are required and uh, follow up uh, for low risk is total for five years for intermediate risk a total for 10 years and for intermediate risk it's important if you do three monthly uh, cystoscopies and then after two years if there's cystoscopies for the first two years is negative then go on and do the uh, six monthly for up to five years and then annually uh, for high and very high risk patients cytology is mandatory it is important that you do it for three months for two years and then six months up to five years and then annually CT is done annually to up to five years and then CT every two years for up to ten years the follow-up is lifelong in high and very high risk patient so uh, what has changed is that intermediate risk patient um, the no systematic uh, evaluation is required now what about radical cystectomy uh, a few words about radical cystectomy for um, uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer uh, it improves the uh, the staging accuracy because it is seen that one quarter to half of the patients are up staged to muscle invasive bladder cancer so they actually have muscle invasive which we have not been able to diagnose NMIBC experience disease progression to muscle invasive uh, have a first prognosis then in um, de novo muscle invasive cancer <coughs> the risk factors include morbidity and impact on quality of life uh, very high risk disease progression this is in responsive tumors which are all uh, have a very poor prognosis a delay in radical cystectomy may lead to decreased disease specific survival in patients with whom uh, radical cystectomy performed before progression to MIBC, the five-year disease-free status rate is exceeds about 80 percent. A word about um, um, imaging. Imaging has really changed in bladder cancer now, and uh, we are all used to the pirate. And now there is of talk about. Uh, the virads, which is the vesicle uh, imaging uh, using an MR <coughs> multiparametric MRI scan, very similar to the one that we have been using in, in prostate cancer, but uh, now for bladder cancer as well. Uh, there is good quality data available, but again, uh, the availability and the uh, radiologist ability to uh, read these wired scan is still uh, not uniformly available everywhere so <clears throat> this is something for the future and we need to really uh, be cognizant of these developments so uh, if you look at the guidelines this is reflected in the guidelines that uh, the local staging with MR scan is, is recommended option coming from these and these are the older guidelines which were pr predominantly CT based thank you very much for your attention and I hope you have learned something new today about the uh, latest progression latest developments in bladder cancer it's a highly um, heterogeneous disease and we need to be aware of uh, what are the new recommendations so that we can treat our patients well Thank you very much for your attention.